All right, today, 13.3, the base E. So today, we are going to talk about a very special number in math called the natural base. It is notated with the letter E, and it's approximately 2.718. In your calculator, if you look, right here, you can see a blue, maybe it's blue for you, but E to the X right there, you see it? If I do e to the x to the first power, there's the approximation. It's a number kind of like pi, where it doesn't have any pattern that repeats. It looks like it does, but it doesn't. Um, and then it keeps on going forever and ever. So we are going to be graphing e to the x. So this is an exponential growth function because our base is bigger than 1. And we are going to approximate this as 3, just so it's super easy to graph. So when I plug in uh, 3 to the negative 2, that's approximately 1 ninth, approximately 1 third, 1. Now, anything to the 0 power is 1. That's why it's not approximated there. Um, 3 to the first power, approximately 3, and approximately 9. Okay? So just like all of our other growths, we're only really expecting you to end up graphing when you're doing your shifts and stuff the first uh, or these three numbers right here but let's see negative one one third this is the negative two one ninth zero one one three and then way up here so same thing it's just an exponential growth graph it's just a very special one um, because this occurs often and we uh, in the natural world which is why it's called the natural base you can look that up on your own time. Actually, look it up, read it, and uh, print it out, and put your name on it, and I'll give you 1% extra credit if you figure out, bring me some information on the natural base. But in order to get the extra credit, you actually have to read it. You just can't print it out, so you need to highlight it and underline um, some cool facts about the natural number E. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and identify the domain. It's from negative infinity to infinity. And in without any shifting or anything, it's going to be greater than 0. So what we know is that as x approaches negative infinity, so this is just math's way of saying as x gets smaller and smaller, what are the y values getting closer? So as you get more negative, the y values are approaching 0. What happens as you pick bigger x's? So as your x's are getting bigger and bigger, your y values are going closer and closer to infinity because they keep growing. Okay? Um, the graph of f of x does not have any x-intercepts because it doesn't ever cross the x-axis, but it does have a y-intercept of 0, 1. Okay? Moving on, let's graph these guys. So like I said before, you guys are using these middle three values, but keeping in mind the sharp turn that exponential graphs take. So let's just figure this all out. This one is going to go right two and down three. This one is going to reflect over the x-axis. This one right here is going to go left 3 and down 1. And this guy is going to reflect over the x-axis and go up 2. Okay? And they all have the same base, so they all have the same parent graph. So I'm going to go ahead and get my asymptotes on all those for the parent graph and then I'm going to go ahead and plot all those points so negative 1 um, is 1 third uh, 1 3 negative 1 1 3 negative 1 third 1 3 negative 1 third 1 3 okay so this one right here is going to go right 2 and down 3. So move it right 2 and go down 1, 2, 3. 
right two, down one, two, three, right two, down one, two, three, and then we have our asymptote right there, and there's our graph. So now we just need to fill out our domain and range. So domain, we have finally, hopefully, figured out that for exponentials, it's the same thing, regardless if it's growth or decay. The only one that changes is our range, and we can see from our graph and from our equation that it has to be greater than negative 3. Okay, moving on to the next one. This one right here is just a reflection, so we're just going to reflect those points, so positive 3 to negative 3. Okay, and then the asymptote is staying the same, and then it's going to coast and take a turn down here. And the reason why it's taking that turn down is because this parent graph actually starts really steep right there. Domain for that one, x such that negative infinity is less than x, which is ne less than negative. Oh. You can have two negative infinities. That's funny. We'll just wipe that out. And then the range. Ooh, this one's a little different because of the reflection. We're going to have y such that y is less than 0. So that negative switches the sign from greater than to less than. Okay. Moving on, we're going left 3 and down 1. So we go left 3, 1, 2, 3, down 1. Left 3, down 1. Left 3, down 1. There's our asymptote. And then post along the asymptote like that. So there's our graph, domain. I'm going to do this domain too since it's the same. And then the range on this one, there is no reflection, so it's greater than 1. Negative 1, right? Because it went down 1, so it's negative 1. Okay, this one, we do have another reflection. So this we take care of first just like we did in the one above it. And those are the reflected points right there. And then we are going to go ahead and move everything up to. So one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, and my asymptote gets moved. And then it's going to coast along and turn down. And for that range, we have y such that y is less than 2 because of the reflection we have to do the less than. Right? Okay? Let's go ahead and see what these say. Predict the effect of the parameters h, k, or a on the graph of the parent function. Identify any changes of domain, range, or end behavior. So remember, for any exponential, the graph is going to look something like this right here. So this is just going to be the parent equation and it's going to be um, a to the x minus h plus k, right? So if there's a negative in front, it's reflecting. If it's in with the x, it's horizontal. And if it's out here, it's k. So this one says take f of x and subtract 3 over 2. So is that 3 over 2 in with the x? And if you're like, I don't know what you mean, do you see how this 1 fourth is in with the x? So because that negative 3 over 2 is not in with the x, it's representing k. So it's going to go down 3 over 2 units. So the whole graph gets shifted down. So envision this graph getting shifted down 3 over 2 or 1.5. There is no effect on the domain or end behavior, but the range changes to y is greater than negative 3 halves, right? Because that's the asymptote. Okay, let's take a look at this one right here. x plus 1 fourth. So because that's in with the x, I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I get uh, negative 1 fourth. So this is going to be translated left. Um, 
a quarter of a unit, so one fourth units. There is no effect on the domain range or end behavior because I just shifted the graph left or right. I didn't move it up or down and I didn't reflect it. So that makes no changes to the range or anything else for that matter. And that's it for today's lesson.